Welcome to the 2023 Volume 3 Latinas 100 book launch. We're excited to have you join us to celebrate the writer's wonderful accomplishment of publication. You will also be able to chat with the writers on the side panel as I will be able to answer any questions that you have regarding the book. I would like to introduce Lourdes Aro, our Latin American director for the Latinas 100 community, and she's in charge of all the publications for Latin America. She's also a four-time published author, a teacher and professor, and has been over and has been doing that for over 37 years. With us today, we'll also have Afra Espinosa, who will be doing the majority of the translations and will be hosting the Spanish launch as well. Welcome, Lulu. Sean todos ustedes bienvenidos a nuestro lanzamiento de nuestro libro Latina 100, inspirando a nuestras próximas generaciones. Este año ha sido muy grato, 2023, porque tenemos la oportunidad de estar todos reunidos para este gran logro que hemos tenido como latinas y latinos, hombres y mujeres. Ustedes podrán chatear aquí en, en nuestra grabación con todos nuestros coautores y coautoras para que podamos contestar las preguntas dudas que ustedes tengan sobre nuestro proyecto. Me gustaría presentarles a Adriana Rosales, que ella es nuestra fundadora, de la que tuvo la idea original de hacer este gran proyecto gracias a la pandemia que tuvimos de COVID. Salió esta maravillosa oportunidad de escribir y publicarnos. También tenemos a Afra Espinosa, que estará con nosotros eh, hablando en español y Adriana en inglés. Por si tienen alguna duda, yo estaré en el chat también contestando preguntas y dudas que tengan todos ustedes. Muchas gracias y sean bienvenidos. All right, let's begin. I want to go ahead and start with Iris. She is our prior winner of the essays from la was it the first year Iris? Last year. Last year. Yes. So she's one of our winners and I I really love her story. And I want to go ahead and give you your minute. Welcome, Iris. Thank you so much. Gracias a todos. Um, I'm going to do it in English, obviously. because Of I'm course, working. of course. <laughs> um, my name is Iris Virginia Fernandez. And I, I was fortunate enough to, to um, write in volume two. And this time for volume three, I'm actually writing about my dad because he seems to get lost in the sauce. <laughs> uh, uh, part of my legacy is from both of them. And I tend to uh, uh, honor my mom every every time I write. So this year, I decided that I wanted to write about my dad. And his the story is called Chino's Heart, El Corazón de Chino. And I hope that you'll enjoy it as much as I enjoyed writing it. Um, and I'm from the Bronx in the U.S. And what else? So, and I'm just happy to be here for volume three. Yes, and we're happy to have you. And I, well, I mean, I interacted with you when I was doing the translation um, to Spanish and I was rereading a lot of the stories. I'll, I'll reread a couple of times just because I do the reviews. And um, I really enjoyed it. I, I just, I feel like I know Chino. <laughs> and so it's just such a lovely way to uh, leave a legacy in although it's not your personal story it's your dad's story um that he's able to still be alive in the anthology and i just really love that and i so appreciate that you wrote about him so thank, thank you so much you. he lives in me <laughs> yes yes i feel like i know him so thank you so much edies thank you wonderful okay i am going with a chela my beautiful friend chela diaz Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Chella, and I'm coming to you from Orange County, California. And it, I enjoyed being part of the Latina 100 project because of the community that we are building and the legacy we're going to leave. The title of my chapter is You Can Create the Life That You Desire, where I share tips and tools to help you identify and release the money drama from childhood so that you're able to see the opportunities around you. I had a wonderful time writing it and my goal is to give you the tools so that you are able to create the life that you decide. Thank you. Love it. Thank you, Chela, I appreciate you. And you were also part of our last anthology, so. 
I love, if you guys get a chance to read her, her other story as well, um, La Hija de un Panadero, The Baker's Daughter. I love that title too. So wonderful. Thank you so much for being part of the community. And we're going to go with Adasa. Hey, superstar. Hello, hello. Congratulations on all of your YouTube work and your poetry. I love it. I am having so much fun. It's all about having fun, right? So um, my name is Arasa Munoz Rivera. And I would like to thank, first of all, Adriana and the entire Latinas 100 team. I enjoyed being part of the Latinas 100 project because of the sense of community and also the sense of belonging. The title of my essay is, I Love to Write. And I chose to share this story because I believe it will help the world be a better place and also help the next generation by emphasizing the importance of monitoring the words that we speak and the words that we have in our thoughts. Words have a lot of power. And as we learn to monitor them and change them, um, literally you can transform your entire life. I currently live in the United States of America in Sacramento, California. And you can find my work on my website, which is evolutionary-transformation.com. And I look forward to hearing how our stories have impacted your life as well as my life for the better. Thank you. Love it, Alasa. Thank you so much. And also for being supportive to the project from the get-go. Um, so we had a we had a, an interesting way that we connected. So I'm always really appreciative to Denise Soler who connected us back back when. So happy to have you and I loved reading your story as well. It's also an honor. Mention, Hadassah also is a wonderful editor who edited my my last book that I that I launched on Amazon and she did a fantastic job and we were like we were up there for a couple of days right on number one. So <laughs> I you. cried a lot. There were many tears of healing while I was editing her book. It was amazing. Yeah. So for those of you writers, your editor, she's definitely a wonderful editor. All right. So let's um, go ahead in Refugio. I'm so happy you're joining us. Yeah, absolutely. So Adriana, thank you for everything you're doing for our community. So extremely important. Um, so I'm Refugio Atilano. I'm from Chicago, born and raised Chicago, second generation Mexican. Um, the chapter of my book, and I'm just reading it here, is the Latino Leadership Playbook, uh, Reshaping the, future, the Latino Future in Corporate America. So my, my story is, you know, I'm a, I'm a corporate guy. You know, I've been in a lot of different companies, industries, et cetera. And, um, you know, growing up, you know, my father was a truck driver. My mom didn't work. So kind of the same thing. I have, I have three siblings. And it was tough, right? We had to problem solve. We had to scramble and, and all that. So I had to figure out life by myself, basically. And uh, fast forward, you know, I've made all the wrong turns in corporate life. Um, so a lot of failures, but a lot of successes as well. And, and now that Later in my life where I'm, I've learned what, what works and what doesn't work, um, I always tell myself I wish I had me when I was younger because I would have probably shaved 10 to 15 years off my leadership journey. There's no doubt about it. Yep. So now I'm in a position where I'm giving myself to the entire Latino community. I do have me, but I'm giving myself to all the, the next generation of Latino leaders. In addition, um, in the Latino Leadership Playbook, which is coming out in October, by the way, um, I have 56 of the most influential Latino and Latinas contributing how-tos. It's not inspirational, but it's really action-packed how-tos to develop your leadership capability in the workplace so we can compete, you know, with the non-Latino slash white people. Um, I'm going to tea, make sure we tee everybody else for success for generations to come. So that's my story. I love it. I love it. I love it. I saw I saw the cover of the book. I love it. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that that pops up on the screen here in a second. And I just love that that you are doing it because I needed that book when I was back in corporate. Oh man, I would have needed it. In in the book, I remember the books that I was reading that I didn't resonate with a lot of them. I I understood the the 
the main themes of the leadership, but I just couldn't relate to them. And I know that once I read your book, I'll be able to relate to it because we're coming from a very similar background where we basically raised, I raised myself as well, you know, for a lot of different reasons. Mm -hmm. So thank mm -hmm. you. I appreciate you. And I'm so happy that we connected at like the last minute and I was like, yes. So, so excited to have you um, in the community for sure. Thank you. All right, Lawrence. Lawrence is in the house. <laughs> How are you, my friend? Permítanme. I had a script both in English and Spanish. Hopefully, los puedo leer para. Is that okay? Sure, absolutely. Go for it. Okay, so, buenos días, familia. Mi nombre es Lawrence David Alvarez y quiero tomar este tiempo para darle gracias primero a Adriana y a su equipo por esta increíble oportunidad. Es un gran honor el compartir este escenario con tanta distinguida gente de todas partes del mundo para celebrar este bello momento pero aún más gusto me da la oportunidad de ser parte de este movimiento en el que cada uno de nosotros amplifica su voz a través de sus historias para abrir camino y motivar a los líderes del mañana. Espero y mi pequeño granito de arena escrito desde el corazón le sea de bendición a todos los que lo lean el resumen de mi vida. The Silicon Valley Survivor, from GED to Tech Leader. That's uh, the Spanish version. <laughs> okay. So, gracias. Uh, thank you, familia. My name is Lawrence David Alvarez, and I want to take this time to thank Adriana and her team for this incredible opportunity. It is a great honor to share this scenario with such distinguished people from all over the world to celebrate this beautiful moment. But it gives me greater pleasure for this opportunity to be part of a movement in which each of us amplifies their voice through the stories that pave the way and motivate the leaders of tomorrow. I hope that my grain of sand written from the heart will be a blessing to everyone who reads the summary of my life, the Silicon Valley survivor from a GED to a tech leader. Gracias. Love it. Thank you. And um, I, I also reached out to you after I read your story, didn't I? <laughs> you did. <laughs> I was like, what? What? <laughs> Here's some stories that I read, you guys. And I'm like, whoa. I like all everybody has had did such a wonderful and beautiful job of really pouring your heart out or sharing that one really intimate thing. And I'm, I want you to all to know that that is such a privilege for me to be able to share the stories. And it's such a privilege. And I, I feel really honored to, to know that little piece of you. And uh, I just want to thank you for that. I did have to throw that in there because Lauren's your, one of your stories that me was like, Whoa, I, yeah, you all have to read it. So hopefully when once it's sent out, once you guys have access to to all of the um the the content, then would love for you guys to interact in the Facebook group and and uh, and share and share with each other. So fantastic. All right, so I am going to Michelle Matos Gordon. Congratulations on winning essay um for this volume three, I enjoyed reading your your story, and I also enjoy uh, getting to getting to know you through your story. Thank you, thank you so much, Aviana. Um, it, it's been a pleasure to be part of this. Um, so I am Michelle uh, Matos Gordon, um, originally from Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic, uh, raised in New York. I uh, actually came as a little baby, <laughs> um, but I enjoyed being part of this project because it. It, it helped me fulfill a life dream, which was to uh, someday publish something. And uh, I, I can never imagine myself doing this by myself. And I, I love what your what the mission of your project is and helping elevate voices that I think um, it goes untold so often. Um, so the title of my essay is No hay misa en español. Um, and to me, I, I chose that story because I, well, that phrase, it, it's something that my mom was told the very first thing she got here and uh, being raised very, very Catholic, it was a very profound thing for her. But to me, that symbolizes, I think, what so many immigrant families go through when they get here and just the different trials and tribulations we get through. And we still survive and we still make it and we are resilient um, and we just have that grit and to, to make things better for our kids. So when I was trying to write something about me, I just can't separate my success without thinking about my parents. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I think they're, they're intertwined. And I think like every other family, we're standing on top of other people's shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, and same thing I'm doing for, for my son. It's 
trying to, you know, move things up the ladder so he can take it up another level. Um, so what I hope is that with our stories, we can inspire the people and they can see, you know, keep dreaming and keep at it. No matter how bad things look, there's the light there. And just we make and there's beautiful stories among all of us that it just needs to be told. And I wanted to at least tell my parents' story um, via me because um, I my story can't exist without theirs. Um, uh, so me as a Latina right now, I actually represent one of 1.4% of the industry that actually is a firm ownership managing assets in the United States. Um, so it, you know, it feels very lonely. <laughs> um, but I'm focused on, on helping other uh, families. Um, I'm also working with nonprofits because I think that there's so much that nonprofits do in our community to elevate. So help, sharing what I know and helping them, it's a way for me to help our community at large. So if I can do anything for anyone, please look at, look me up at www.investably.com. Um, but I, I hope that we can together just keep telling each other stories and keep connecting and keep uplifting each other up and the people coming behind us. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And yeah. I, I love reading your story. I, I loved it because it I from what I got out of the story was that your mom was a really big pivotal powerhouse and that mm -hmm. you you basically looked at what she was able to to produce coming to this country and you mm -hmm. as a young woman was you were like, Hey, my mom can do it and mm -hmm. y no, sabía, y no sabía inglés. Mm -hmm. you know, and then I love the title. Like what got me of, of your story was when I read the title. I was like, oh, this is like the best title ever because yeah. I have a lot of family who, who comes here from Mexico. And that's the first thing they say, no hay misa en español, <laughs> especially yeah. if you're Catholic, right? Yeah. So I, I love that. And I love that we were able to connect through this project. And I look forward to definitely getting yeah. more people to look at the type of business that you do and mm -hmm. to look into uh, really what you're doing is helping and assisting people create generation, generational wealth. Exactly. You know, and so exactly. I get us closer down, down, down the path. Yeah, absolutely. So I love that. I love that, um, that you, you know, what you're doing and we're here for you as a community, anything that you need from us in the Latinas 100 okay. community. And no, and just know I'm here for you guys. So I'm here. We exist. We may be 1.4%, but we exist. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you yeah. so much. And congratulations on being Thank the you. winner. Yay! Thank you. Thank you. Yes. All right. So we have Ana Maria. Buenos dias. Good morning, everybody. Well, first, I want to start by saying that Adriana has been such a blessing. So I want to thank Adriana and her entire team. Quiero darle las gracias a Adriana y a todo su equipo. Realmente, Adriana ha sido una bendición, un angelito que me cayó del cielo. Um, I started writing when I was 13 years old, um, just waking up, like needing to write from my bed and then writing like on napkins and things like that. Um, I endured a lot of hardship for like 31 years. But as I grew, I had this dream, not only of becoming a writer, but that I could use my pain to help others, to empower others. And so that's what I want to leave, a legacy of you can get out of the pain, you can look at all the beauty you have inside, and you can use it to make a better world. Empecé a escribir de niña, tenía como 13 años, 12, me despertaba de dormida. Tenía la necesidad de escribir, escribía en servilletas, en pedacitos de papel de mantel que arrancaba porque me llegaba la inspiración. Gracias, Adriana, tengo esta oportunidad de hacer mi sueño realidad. Bueno, varios, ¿verdad? Uno es ser escritora, pero el más importante de usar mi historia y mi dolor para ayudar a otros a descubrir toda su grandeza y todo su valor. And I want to leave you with like my favorite quote of all times by Facundo Cabral. He who does what he loves is blessedly condemned to success. Quiero dejarlos con una de mis frases favoritas de todo el tiempo del señor Facundo Cabral. Dice, el que hace lo que ama está benditamente 
condenado al éxito. And I also want to dedicate this essay, quiero dedicar este ensayo a todos ustedes, to all of you, for all the greatness that you bring into Latinas 100. And thank you so much for being here. Enjoy our books, enjoy our essays, but most of all, enjoy who you are and find yourself. I love it. That's beautiful. Uh, Ana Maria, I also want to mention that her book is coming out real okay. soon here. And uh, we are working together on publishing her very first book. And so that's been a lot of fun. We're working with integrating a lot of AI images and a lot of her poetry and what she's writing. So I'm excited to also uh, be contributing in that area with you and bringing I your do. easy voice to, to the world through that an entire book for you. So congratulations on that. Adriana, thank you. I just wanted to say, um, I forgot, I wanted to mention that. I wanted to say my book is coming and it's called Un Poquito de Everything, A Little Bit of Todo. I love it. I love that title too. Fantastic. All right. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have Medium Simone. Welcome. It's good to, it's good to finally meet you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So hi, my name is Miriam Simon. I am from Mexico and raised in New Jersey and currently work in New York City. Uh, near the World Trade Center. Uh, I would like to thank Latinas 100, Adriana, and fellow co-authors. This has been really a dream come true for me to be an author. I had been searching many different ways on how I can become published. And it's been a, it's been a long time for me that I've been wanting to become an author and I just didn't figure, didn't know how to get it done. So I'm very thankful for you to give me this opportunity. Uh, I enjoyed being part of the Latinas 100 project because it is important to memorialize our stories for the next generation. There are so many incredible Latino contributors, uh, contributions, and we owe it to our children to share our journey. The title of my essay is Finding Strength in Adversity from the Back to the Forefront. And I chose to share this story because I wanted to share my growth journey from being raised by my grandparents, because my parents really didn't have the means to raise us. And I really have a lot of service stories about my grandparents. Mm -hmm. They would have like people come from Mexico and sit on our couch. And, and really, that was where they lived. And that's where they uh, were able to get a job. My grandparents would help them to get their life started here in the United States. And I learned to be of service because of the way that they treated their family and all the people that came from Mexico to the United States. And um, my story will also help, you know, to understand that even through adversity with very few role models, with very few people around that look like you, you can achieve great things and make an impact in your own way, in your own world, that will be your contribution to our society. I've had to create my own path and I continue to do that now. Uh, I'm a senior advisor to an EBRG that I advocated for within the last two years within my organization. And it is just so rewarding to be able to help people like me. So thank you. Love it. I love it. Thank you so much. I'm so happy I got to meet you through this project and Again, your story is wonderful. A lot of times you when you meet people um, and you, you know, we all have some some type of perception in the beginning. And it's not and it's really through writing when you actually read somebody's story. And if and if and if a person opens up their heart to really share an intimate thing about them, um, that you really get to know them. It's almost you, trust me when I tell you that when I read the stories, I feel like I know you. <laughs> <laughs> and, like somehow and me, I like know you I'm like oh my god she's like me or I you know that's like my story too you know bits and pieces so I really felt that when I when I when I read your story and um and then saw what you've been able to build um from from really from scratch you know and I don't know if you had a lot of mentors by when you were creating that particular project but I'm sure that um that it wasn't it wasn't easy to create. No, it, it wasn't easy. And I really had to fight for it. And I did have a, a sponsor who worked with me. Uh, but this comes after like eight years of, of working within this organization and really trying to build, you know, uh, 
try to build a justification big enough that it will be taken seriously. And when I wrote this, came at a really hard time for me uh, at the point where I was literally crying on my way home uh, on the train because it, because something had just, you know, sparked something that happened at work that was really, really, I was really going through a, the adversity at the moment. And I really needed to find the strength for myself to be able to keep going. And mm -hmm. this really helped me you know, it catapulted me to the next level. And I'm really happy that it all worked out. And your email came like, this is your last chance <laughs> to, to join. <laughs> and it was at the perfect time. I said, Oh, my God, I have the perfect thing to to to, uh, to submit. And then I just went back and rewrote it added, added more information. Yeah, and it just worked out. So thank you so much. Yes, I'm happy you did. Thank you so much. All right. So we have mm, Afra, si quieres presentar. Sí, muchas gracias. Un gusto escucharlos. El equipo México. <laughs> Creo que me abandonaron un poco. Ay, <laughs> no. El equipo México. Vamos a iniciar con una persona que estimo muchísimo, Francisco. Preséntate, da tu nombre, de dónde eres y, por supuesto, en qué te inspiraste para escribir, para darnos tu historia, contarnos tu historia. Oh, pues qué grande honor de hoy iniciar esta sección de la parte México de Latina 100. Pues desde luego que es también un grande honor conocer a Adriana y a todo el grupo de escritores, pero más honor es agradecer a Afra, que fue la que me animó a cumplir mi sueño de escribir mi libro, precisamente estando ahí de, de compañeros en el Colegio de Bachilleres del Estado de Michoacán. Actualmente estoy acá mismo en Morelia, Michoacán, en México. Soy profesor de la Facultad de Derecho de la Universidad Michoacán en San Nicolás de Hidalgo, pero me da mucho gusto reconocer y anunciar que la, la historia que escribí, el ensayo que escribí de resiliencia, se llama Lisania y Alexa que son precisamente mi hija y mi nieta, donde intento explicar cómo después de que el papá y el abuelo se fue muchos, muchos años de fiesta en fiesta y con todo el desastre y todos los daños que causó a la familia, pues ellas dos, Lisania, que nació en el 75, pero Alexa, que nació en, eh, eh, Alexa, que nació en el 2002, pues todas sacaron a relucir todas sus habilidades, todo su potencial, toda su fuerza para superar las dificultades que intento platicar, aunque de una manera muy concisa. Y en realidad, pues entonces, es un homenaje porque mi hija Lisania finalmente, el 27 de febrero del 2022, pues decidió irse al cielo, pero pues se quedó Alexa. Entonces, entre los dos, estamos muy contentos, estamos superando todo esto. Yo soy abogado, pero ahora ya tiene rato que me dio la buena noticia que también se metió a estudiar leyes y también va a ser abogada Alexa. Entonces, después de haber vencido las dificultades, vamos los dos muy juntos a una nueva vida profesional y es donde nos interesa mucho conservarnos dentro de Latina 100, porque también será parte de un gran sueño que toda Latinoamérica estemos muy unida, así como era siglos atrás, desde Alaska hasta donde se pueda, la Patagonia, por allá, todos muy unidos inicialmente y se puede, intelectualmente, en amor, en conocimientos, en compartir las letras. Así que, por favor, todas, todos reciban un abrazo muy cariñoso. Afra, por favor, recibe un abrazo de mi parte. Adriana y todas, qué gusto que me hayan permitido pertenecer a esto y estoy muy emocionado esperando nuestros libros. Muchas gracias. Gracias a usted, Muy don Francisco. Gracias, Francisco. Un gusto verlo. Um, ya veo por ahí a Eduardo, al compañero Eduardo. Eduardo, un gusto saludarte. Qué gusto, otra. ¿Cómo estás? Bien. Guapísima, como siempre. 
Gracias. Tengo que cuidar el audio porque... <risa> Gracias. Lo entiendo. Lo entiendo. Lo entiendo. Lo entiendo. Bueno, pues eh, me presento, soy Eduardo Romero Aldana, eh, radico en la ciudad de Morelia, Michoacán, de esta bella, gran ciudad perteneciente a la de México. Este, bueno, pues muy bendecido por estar rodeado de tanto talento en este proyecto de Latina 100. Gracias, eh, Adriana Rosales, Luaro, les agradezco mucho por haberme aceptado en este grupo. Y en esta ocasión decidí escribir algo que titulé Vasija de Bronce, que no es más que un, un adiós a la materia y una bienvenida a lo espiritual. Esto va concatenado un poco con Latinas 102, pero nada que alterara ese pasado. Este, yo espero que mediante mi vivencia pueda generar un poco de alivio a esas personas que inevitablemente tenemos que pasar por este momento. Pues sin más, este, que la haya con ustedes, agradeciéndoles, repito, maravillado de estar con tanto bello corazón y con tan lindas compañeras. Es todo. Muchas gracias. gracias. Uh -huh. Muchas gracias, Eduardo. Este, un gusto escucharte. Y muchas gracias. Eh, Josefina, adelante. Un gusto conocerte, Josefina. Josefina, tu audio está apagado. Josefina, por favor. Eh, buenos días. Este, yo antes que nada agradezco a Adriana, a Lulú, a ti y a todos los compañeros y compañeras la oportunidad de comunicarme en este texto que se realizó, volumen 3, porque, bueno, este, me parece una oportunidad de poder expresar cosas que a veces en otro momento y en otras circunstancias hubiera sido difícil com comentar. Bueno, más, antes que nada quiero decir, mi nombre soy Josefina Baeza Castillo, soy de un pueblo de Michoacán, eh, México, pero vi, tengo bastante tiempo ya viviendo en Aurelia, Michoacán. El motivo por el cual yo escribo es justamente porque entender que ante los eventos, ante las circunstancias que vivimos en la vida, tenemos una oportunidad de externarlas, eso para mí es liberador. Liberador porque en otros momentos y en otras circunstancias quizá para, para mí hubiera sido motivo de pena de decir cómo es posible que yo viva o diga o a, y haga esto. Y específicamente lo que quiero transmitir es que ante eventos no esperados, como por ejemplo el hecho de que se viene un embarazo en el cual tú te preguntas, dices muchas cosas y que te cuesta trabajo tomar decisiones y que finalmente tomas decisiones positivas hacia la vida, dices, ah, pues es algo para mí eh, muy importante, pero sin embargo evolucionas, avanzas en este proceso de la vida y te das cuenta de que después esas personas eh, con las que tú generaste, con las cuales diste vida, ya no están, te genera una situación complicada y difícil y todos esos circunstancias, todas esas situaciones para mí son las que he querido transmitir. Y si yo logro tocar el corazón de alguna persona ante situaciones como la mía, ante mi historia, que se sientan identificados y que puedan decir, esto que yo estoy leyendo aquí me motiva la reflexión para una mejor toma de decisión, para mí con eso me doy por bien servida. Creo que yo soy una persona que no soy mucho de de compartir, convivir situaciones personales, pero me admira y me llama la atención que haya tomado esa decisión y por comisión a haberlo hecho. Y eso para mí es motivo de gratitud, de tranquilidad, de satisfacción, poder compartir cosas que quizás no hubiera podido compartir en otro momento. Doy las gracias, te saludo con mucho gusto y a todos, todas las personas que en un momento dado me ven. Desde el corazón, gracias. Hola, ¿qué tal? Yo soy Ángela Miranda y quiero expresar mi enorme alegría y mi orgullo, la satisfacción que tengo de pertenecer a este proyecto Latinas 100. 
El nombre de mi ensayo es La música me salvó y elegí escribir porque deseo dejar este legado para las nuevas generaciones a través de mi historia y que puedan ver que a pesar de las adversidades es posible lograr nuestros sueños y tener una vida feliz y armoniosa. Nunca se rindan. Actualmente me encuentro en la ciudad de Morelia y quedo a sus órdenes para los comentarios sobre lo que he escrito en mis redes sociales, Ángela Miranda Oficial, Facebook, en Instagram, el mismo nombre, en YouTube igual y en Twitter. Les dejo todo mi cariño, un fuerte abrazo y siempre estoy para servirles. Bendiciones. Hello, I'm Derek Luke. And I'm excited to be here celebrating this with all of you today. I want to start by saying thank you to the Latinos 100 Project for bringing us all together for comprising this group of Latinos that are breaking barriers, that are making impactful changes in their community. Thank you again for that. The title of my essay is Beyond Borders, Understanding Diversity in the Global Workplace. And it's a lesson for generations on the importance of promoting diversity and inclusion in multinational organizations and understanding its impact on organizations, individuals, society, todo el mundo. I'm currently located in Las Vegas, Nevada, and if you would like to learn more about me, you can visit DerekLuke.com, and I do hope to hear how our essays have positively impacted your lives for the better. Again, thank you. Hello, my name is Nancy Acosta, and I would like to thank God, my husband, Enrique Acosta, and Adriana Rosales for this opportunity. I enjoy being a part of the Latinas 100 Project because it allowed me to become the first published author of my family. The title of my essay is Breaking the Cycle, The Power of Words and the Transformation of Generational Pain. I chose to share this story because I believe it will help the world be a better place and or help the next generation. I currently reside in Florida, and this is my first of many works to come. I look forward to hearing how our stories have impacted your life for the better. Hola, mi nombre es Dolores Hilda Antunes Cabrera. Feliz de estar en la presentación de Latinas 3, tercera edición, el cual transmite un legado a las siguientes generaciones. La experiencia de vida que compartimos todos los latinos en esta edición es para mejorar al, a los seres humanos y dejar un mensaje de amor. En estas líneas de Latinas 3 comparto un poquito de la vida de mi madre, la cual para mí es, estoy agradecida porque es lo mejor que me ha pasado haber tenido esta madre, este ejemplo de vida, esta tenacidad y esta guerrera. Esto amerita un brindis, felicidades a todos los que participan en, este, en esta obra literaria y salud y éxito para todos. Hola, soy Marta Luna Castro, mi historia la titulé Un Encuentro con la ELA. Decidí participar en el libro Latina 100, volumen 3, contando mi historia de cómo vivimos en familia la enfermedad de mi esposo, como cuidadora primaria, como madre, como esposa. Al enterarme de la participación de otras autoras contando su historia de vida, me doy cuenta de que es muy importante para nosotras como mujeres apoyarnos sentirnos fortalecidas, sentirnos motivadas, sabiendo que hemos dado lo mejor que podemos en cada una de las situaciones que atravesamos. Estoy muy agradecida con la invitación recibida para participar en este nuevo libro, siendo un legado para las siguientes generaciones. Gracias por la invitación, esperemos que se den tiempo de leer nuestras historias y participar en un futuro en algún volumen posterior a este. Ya. Hola, mi nombre es Angélica García Bolaños. Primeramente, me gustaría agradecer a Lupita Mendoza, quien me invitó a participar en este proyecto de Latina 100, con mi tema, El cáncer viviendo en mi cuerpo. Ha sido un tema que de un poco de experiencia de vida. Con ello pretendo alcanzar a más mujeres y decirles cuídate y chécate. Cualquier cambio en nuestro cuerpo en un instante nos puede cambiar la vida. Asimismo, también llegarle a las mujeres más pequeñas para que tengan esa cultura de cuidarse y prevenir muchas enfermedades. Agradezco la experiencia eh, vivida y actualmente resido en Pachuca. 
y estoy esperando con ansia, con mucha emoción, el ver cómo nuestras historias impactan la vida para mejorar de muchas más personas. Hello, my name is Angela Flores Robertson. I'd like to thank Adriana Rosales and the Latinas 100 team for this amazing opportunity. I enjoy being part of the Latinas 100 project because it shares the start of my journey into tech. While working on this project, it unlocked something that I knew was there, but had not found a way quite yet to express it. It was important for me to share this story to encourage others to realize they're not alone in their journeys. For them not to give up and realize they are enough and they are strong enough to overcome any challenges. The title of my essay is Angelita's Memoirs, My Journey as a Latina into STEM. And I chose to share this story because it's about sharing my voice and my challenges being a Latina. I currently reside in San Jose, California, and you can contact me via LinkedIn under Angela Flores Robertson. I look forward to hearing how our stories have impacted your life for the better. Thank you. Hola, mi nombre es Yolanda Guerrero Valdovinos de Morelia, Michoacán, México. Felicito y agradezco a Adriana por esta labor que inició y hoy concluye con el volumen número 3 de Latina 100. Todo un tratado sobre la resiliencia. Mi colaboración en este ensayo fue sobre la pintura como arte terapia. Tuve oportunidad de llevarla a cabo ahora en la pandemia y me ayudó como un pilar, así como me dejó un regalo de vida. Yo espero que las nuevas generaciones y ahorita motivarlos a que tomen un pincel y lo intenten si no es pintura, es cualquier otra expresión de arte que nos ayuda a sanar el alma y nos ayuda a enfrentar situaciones difíciles. Me pueden localizar en Facebook como Yolanda Arte. No dejen de adquirir el libro. Es un libro muy interesante que nos da herramientas para enfrentar muchas situaciones adversas. Gracias. Hola, ¿qué tal? Mi nombre es Noralma Gabriela Ávila. Primero que todo, quiero dar gracias a Dios por un día más de vida, a mi esposo, a mis padres y a mis hijos, su amor y su apoyo incondicional. Estoy muy orgullosa de ser parte del proyecto de Latina 100, ya que gracias a ello he aprendido mi confianza para poder plasmar en cada libro un pedacito de mi historia. Mi ensayo es aprendiendo a vivir con calidad. Decidí regalar esa historia porque sé que con dedicación, amor y esfuerzo se puede aprender a vivir diferente, en armonía y en mejor paz consigo misma. Soy originaria de Tlaltenango, Zacatecas y deseo de todo corazón que cada una de nuestras historias te motiven a ser una persona diferente, a vivir con calidad y a sacar tu mejor versión y sobre todo a no rendirte en los momentos de prueba. Soy coautora de Latinas volumen 2 y 3 y soy terapeuta alternativa. Mi nombre es Alberto Arres Rangel y quiero invitarte a que veas en este volumen 3 de Latina 100 un relato que le he denominado Si sí se puede. Y si tú tienes un hijo, un hermano, un amigo o eres tú, quien está queriendo salir adelante, eres un joven que quiere estudiar, eh, salir adelante, triunfar, hacer lo que tú realmente quieres, te invito a que veas mi relato que tiene que ver efectivamente con un pasaje de mi vida que tuvo trascendencia cuando estuve enfermo de COVID-19 en esta pasada pandemia y que yo te invito a que veas y reflexiones las posibilidades que te da la vida y que te animes a luchar por lo que tú quieres. Muchas gracias y hasta pronto. Hello, my name is Hilda Rodriguez and I would like to thank Adriana Rosales and her team. I really enjoyed being part of the Latinas 100 project because I stepped out of my comfort zone. And not only was I welcomed, but I was supported the entire way. The title of my essay is From Zero to 100 Miles. And I decided to share the story because I believe if we take the time to take care of ourselves, then we can help the world be a better place. I currently reside in Chicago. 
and I look forward to hearing how our stories have impacted your life. Vamos a, vamos a cerrar, vamos a cerrar. Eh, mm -hmm. ya vi el, el mensaje de Hilda. So we're going to go ahead and close it off, you guys. It looks like that is everybody for today. Again, I appreciate you taking the time to come on and participate and share your story. And, uh, oh, what, what, what instrument is that, Iris? <laughs> well, I want to hear it. Listen. It's a guido made out of a gourd that my oh. father always used to play at home. And they use a little... Oh, I want to hear it. Let's hear it. Because now you hear it? <laughs> no, I can't hear it. But listen, if you guys have your maracas or whatever tool you have with you, now is the time. Raise your glasses. Congratulations, everybody. A felicidades a todos. Si tienen su cafecito, vamos a hacer un toast. Uh, let's do a toast to everybody who participated. I look forward to creating an even bigger community and sharing your stories. I want to share, I want to say I love every single story that I read and thank all of the winners for, you know, giving it your all for the essay, for the essay winners for volume three. I appreciate you and uh, cheers to everyone. Thank you so much. Don't leave yet because we're going to do a word, okay? Lawrence. Resiliencia. Res the resilience. Uh, Michelle. Emotional. Thank you. Iris. Grateful. Refugio. Honored. Miriam. Growth. Don Francisco. Trascender. Eduardo. Complemento. Chela. Gratitude. Afra. Crecimiento. Josefina. Liberado. En Adasa. Empowered. Fantastic. All right, everybody, this concludes our pre-record for the book launch, volume three. I appreciate every single one of you, and thank you for taking the time on a Saturday to do this. I appreciate you. Gracias a todos por estar aquí en este sábado y compartir con nosotros y celebrar. Quiero mucho. Nos vemos hasta la próxima vez. Eh? Gracias. Gracias, Emilia. Adiós. Bendiciones. Saludos. Adiós. Adiós.